and welcome back to another episode of Algorand Developer Office Hours. I am your host, Ryan Fox, Developer Advocate here at Algorand. And today I am excited to be joined by Simon Engeson, Jake Reynas, and Brendan Askoff. And collectively, they are part of the engineering team for the Depth Agency, which recently released Algomart, an open source, white label, NFT platform, purpose built for Algorand. Welcome, guys. Hey, hey, Ryan, how's it going? Thanks, Thanks for having us. It's doing well. Thanks very much. Uh, I've also got my colleague here, uh, Russ Vestino, here on the DevRel team with me. And today we're going to learn all about the key features of Algomart, uh, of the Algomart Marketplace software, see some of the demos in action, and understand how NFT creators and brand marketers can put this free software to use. So right now we've got our live audience here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining as always. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining uh, again. Um, so yeah, my name is Simon Ingerson, and I also have Jake with me and Brandon Asko. Um, so as you see here, we have a little uh, QR code with the link to the slides, as well as some other links that might be interested, uh, interesting for you guys uh, after this chat. So, so yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, it's myself, Simon, and Jake, and we also have Brandon. Uh, we're all partner of developers at Depth Agency. Um, we also I uh, want to give shout outs to the rest of the dev team that's been working on Algmart since the spring, uh, Dallas Huggins, Ken Larby, and Nat Arbox. Uh, and also, uh, we are hiring. So if you're interested, feel free to reach out to myself or one of my colleagues on LinkedIn. Uh, links to all of us are in the same uh, link on the, from the previous screen. Uh, like Ryan said, uh, Algmart is an open source white label NFT storefront, uh, specifically for Algorand. Um, and we made this for basically two reasons or two main purposes. Uh, one is to make it easier for developers, as uh, well, a lot of you are at least, uh, to spin up a custom storefront to interact with Algorand, but also to make a storefront that's easy to accept or easy accessible for administrators and uh, end users who may not be familiar with the technical uh, nuances of blockchain technology. How do we do this? So basically, uh, to get make it easy for storefront administrators to easily create, configure, and mint NFTs, we included a pre-configured CMS. Uh, in our case, we're using Directus, uh, as we'll see on the next screen in a little bit. Uh, there are certainly more things to do there. Uh, also, for end users, uh, they should be able to easily redeem, purchase, uh, or bid on NFTs without really having to know too much about what's going on behind the scenes in the blockchain. So as we'll see in the demo, uh, we have a fairly easy onboarding using some familiar authentication mechanisms. Uh, we're using custodial wallets to simplify signing transactions. And we're using uh, Circle uh, to handle all of our payments transactions. Uh, so all that stuff we'll see in the demo as well. Here we see the full tech stack uh, as we have right now. So one underlying technical goal uh, has been to keep this platform fairly modular. This means that some of these blocks uh, can be swapped out for equivalent alternatives. So for example, you might prefer a different cloud provider instead of uh, what we have by default, which is uh, Google Cloud uh, Services, um, or maybe a different email provider. So granted, some of these blocks are, uh, at least today, heavier technical lifts than others. But we're working on reducing some of the vendor lock-ins. So for example, we're considering other options uh, for uh, payments, uh, other email providers, and so on. Uh, and then finally, the uh, block that's in the dashed outline, that's the secondary marketplace, which is an optional feature that we're uh, hopefully getting started to work on uh, early next year and get ready for you guys so people can actually trade NFTs between each other after they have acquired them. Algomart is uh, available today uh, for free. Uh, it's still in a preview state, so keep that in mind when you try to set this up on your own. There, you probably will hit some hurdles. Um, but with that said, we are launching a live instance of, of it on mainnet very soon. Uh, and also, Circle itself requires some onboarding steps that uh, will help with uh, some making sure that uh, transactions are legitimate and secure. Uh, so no customer and anti-money laundering, uh, two very big steps there. 
Uh, and as that process does take some, some time, we do have other options for acquiring NFTs on, our, on the Alcomart platform. That is, you can either make them freely available or you can also make them uh, uh, have a redeemable option. So we might like exchange some NFTs for a redemption code that you will provide for a few users. This is the uh, uh, GitHub repo. Again, the same QR code as before. The link is in there to the repo itself. All right, so Algomart was uh, built to speed up the launch time of new NFT storefronts. So instead of working on it for months, you can now get deployed in weeks. Uh, a lot of our clients at that agency are well-known brands. So this is a way for them to connect directly with their customers rather than using something like uh, OpenSea or some other platform out there. It was also made to uh, lower the bar for entry so more people can acquire NFTs in a fairly streamlined way. Um, and we also made it available as open source so you can build it upon yourself or if you prefer, you can connect with us. We can help customize it and apply it for you. And I think we're ready for demo. All right, cool. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to walk you through the Algorand uh, storefront as it stands today. Um, what I'm also going to do first, though, is I'm going to actually jump into the, the CMS portion where this content is managed. Um, and this is going to kind of help show you the model that is powering what we're actually going to be seeing in the storefront itself. So as Simon mentioned, we have this Directus instance. Directus is a, a node-based CMS platform that is makes it very easy for authors, uh, content authors and administrators to configure their pages and uh, other aspects of the application. And what happens is we have an API that is going to actually consume information from this CMS, and that's what's going to serve it up to the front end and also interface it with the blockchain. So there's a couple of different aspects of the CMS, but I'm not going to go through all of them. The I think the most important ones that are pertinent to our storefront here are NFT templates and pack templates. So as you know, a it's not really possible for a user to just come into a CMS and just start creating things on the blockchain. And likewise, if you wanted to create a certain um, number of editions, let's say you wanted to create five editions or 100 editions of an NFT, you wouldn't want to create them 100 times in a CMS because that would be really tedious and time consuming. So we have this concept uh, in our CMS model of a template. And that template basically represents an NFT record that is configured in the CMS, but then is later consumed by the API to mint those assets on the blockchain and also transfer those assets to different wallets for our end users. So uh, right now I have a seeded database. This is a seed script that comes with our platform. Obviously you would be filling this with your own NFTs and your own assets. But for the purpose of the demo, we can see here that there's a, a number of configurable fields for an NFT. So first we can tell we can tell our API how many times or how many editions of this NFT we want. We can give it a unique asset code, which is uh, almost like a, a SKU, uh, like or a barcode. Then that's going to appear on the blockchain transaction. We can give it a preview image. Uh, we can give it also preview video, audio, or binary files, depending on the actual asset that you're going to be distributing to your customers. We can assign them to pack templates, and we'll, I'll show that in just a second. We can also assign them rarity. So, um, if we were to try, if we were to incentivize or entice our end users to collect certain more valuable NFTs that they could later resell or trade, this is a way that you could denote that rarity. And then we can also group them into sets and collections, and uh, that that'll be a little bit abstract just looking at it in the CMS, but that will make more sense later on in this demo. And then finally, we can also give it just pertinent metadata, so title, subtitle, and body. This is a fully supported markdown editor that will then render on the front end. And you also see translations here. It's worth noting that every single aspect of this application supports standard ISO locales. So if you wanted to deliver different languages to your different end users, um, that is totally doable. So we also have pack templates. And packs are what actually get distributed to our end users. And so a pack can contain a single NFT. So if you wanted to sell a, a, or give away a single NFT, you could put one NFT in a pack. But we're also finding that in a lot of our client prospects that we have, we have certain drops that people want to make or releases. And these drops or releases are actually collections of NFTs that are distributed at once. And so if we go into one, 
actually, I'll just create a new one here. Um, there's a couple, there's actually many different configurations that we can that we can put play here. So slug is just a, a unique URL slug, and that's how they'll access it on the front end. Um, most notably here, though, we have four different types. And there is a free type, which means that anyone can who is authenticated can claim this NFT for free. Um, this might be a interesting proof of concept or a way for uh, one of your clients to test the waters. We also have redeemable uh, packs. And when you create a redeemable pack, the API will automatically generate a redeem code or unique redemption code that can be distributed to end users. And anyone with that redemption code can then come back and enter it, and they can claim their pack that way. We have purchasable packs. And um, just like it sounds, it's uh, you'd set a price. And then any user who wanted to purchase that pack could uh, purchase it for that price. And then we even have an auction model. And there's a, a number of details in here that I'm not going to go into. But essentially, uh, think of eBay's model uh, or similar auction sites where you can set a start date, um, a end date. Um, a, uh, in this case, a price becomes the reserve price. So let's say you were selling a pack for $500, uh, or rather you were auctioning a pack and you didn't want it to be, uh, you didn't want that auction to win unless the highest bid was over $500. You could also set that revert, uh, reserve price here, very similar to eBay. Um, there are a couple other distribution mechanisms. So if you wanted to group a bunch of NFTs in a pack, you could uh, set them to be random. You could set them to be sequenced so that um, at each pack is um, identical to each other. Uh, you can decide the number of NFTs that are going to be in the pack. Um, you can create a pack image. And then just as similar to the NFTs themselves, you can um, add uh, metadata, so title, subtitle body as well as um, select the NFTs. And there's also a couple of other uh, small details in here, but I won't go into all that right now. So now um, going over to the front end with that in mind, um, apologize if that was a little bit boring, but that will this will make a lot more sense now that we're gonna actually look at it in the context of the storefront. So before I actually go and purchase NFTs or, or view the NFTs that I've collected, I'm gonna go through the authentication uh, the authentication flow just to uh, explain a important part of how we're managing wallets. So let's say I was coming here um, and I wanted to set up a brand new account. Actually, this is actually powered by Firebase right now. I should mention that. So you could actually use a variety of different OAuth providers. Um, right now, we're supporting uh, Google sign in. So I could log in through my Google account or I could just log in through email. Um, I could log in here, but if I wanted to create an account, I could do so here. And um, like any other standard form, I would fill out my email, my username, my password. I could select an avatar for my profile picture. But uh, there's one uh, kind of important aspect here that we wanted to talk about, and that is this idea of a passphrase. And this pin code like passphrase, when we actually create an account on the back end, what the API is going to do is going to take uh, this uh, this uh, Firebase information or whatever authentication layer that you bring to it, but it's also going to associate it with a newly created Algorand wallet. And that Algorand wallet is basically going to be a custodial wallet that we manage behind the scenes, which is really nice for users who aren't familiar with the blockchain. They don't have to manage their own wallets. Um, we create it for them and we allow them to manage it. And when you enter this passphrase, what this passphrase is acting as is essentially an encryption key that allows us to take their Algorand wallet and encrypt it, its keys at rest so that um, there, there's a layer of security here. So when you'll see that whenever a uh, end user is going to interface with the blockchain or you know buy an asset or transfer assets, they have to enter their pin code. And that's what allows us to, um, at that time of that operation, transfer that asset or make whatever blockchain operation necessary. So I actually already have an account here associated with my Google account. So I'm just going to log into this real quick. And this is going to bring me back to our storefront. So uh, as you can see here, we have um, configurations for the home page in our CMS. And so I can set featured packs. I can set upcoming packs that I want to highlight can also set notable collectibles or NFTs that are in those packs. So here's my here's my page here. So I have my um, upcoming or my feature drop, which is a redeemable pack. But then I also have a number of other packs here. And going back to those pack types that we were talking about, 
uh, here's an example of a redeemable one that would require a code uh, or a purchasable one that is only $10 or an auction that uh, has not met a reserve price yet, but I have six days to bid on it. And then also free packs. Um, what I can also do is I can click into these packs here and I can interact with them. Um, but we also have a releases page. So in the event that you're going to have many, many packs that you might be selling, this is meant to be more of a faceted way of looking at them. So you can sort them by you know newest or oldest or alphabetically. You can also filter them by price ranges or the types of sale. Uh, auctions, purchases, whether or not the auction has started or ended um, or is currently live or if the reserve is met. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to go ahead and purchase one. Um, so actually, it looks like I purchased all these ones already. So let me find a different one. So um, you'll see when I actually created this pack in the CMS, when we said the amount of additions that were going to be allowed to be minted, were actually five. Um, I've actually already purchased one of these additions just in preparing for this demo. So you, the API knows that there's only uh, four of these packs left. And in, in this instance, maybe it's probably unrealistic that you'd only ever have five, maybe you have 500 or 1,000. Uh, but again, just for the sake of the demo, you'll see here that we have the, uh, the image that we uploaded the, and, and some of the metadata, like the title, um, the markdown description, price, and so on. So I can go ahead and opt to purchase this. And again, here's that passphrase again. So in order to conduct this transaction, I need to enter a valid passphrase. And when I signed up, I just gave it a very simple one of 111111. And here is a credit card form that I can fill out. And um, this is going to be tied to Circle. So what would happen is I would fill out this entire credit card form. We would encrypt that data. We'd send it over to Circle. And they would then validate it and charge the card for us. I'm not going to make you watch me fill out this entire form, um, but we also allow, if you do fill out the form, to save your card for future purposes. And I've done that here. So I am just going to verify with my CVV and I am going to initiate this purchase. And so a couple things are going to happen behind the scenes here. So one, it is validating my, um, is validating my uh, pin code. But it is sending that information to Circle. It is validating it. It is giving us a green light. We're then um, sending the info. We're and then uh, initiating the payment, validating it, and then once that payment is complete, we're transferring the asset. What would happen if this was to if this was to work in my sandbox right now is it would just say that my um, transaction was complete, and then it would give me a link to a pack opening. So that pack opening would look like this. And what we, uh, we're trying to do here is basically bridge this gap between the, the world in which you're buying something that is intangible and also creating some sort of nostalgia for collecting something that was tangible. So something like baseball cards. So what we did here is we created this 3D experience and this is using 3JS um, and is also using a React 3 Fiber library, which is a abstraction layer of 3JS, which is a WebGL library on top of our platform. So there is a composable pack opening scene here where you could theoretically bring your own models and make a number of different tweaks to these models um, that would intake metadata from the pack. So you can see our title and our image here and would allow the users to basically have this little fun unveiling experience of the pack. So if I go ahead and open this pack, it's going to do a little flipperoo and then it's going to reveal the uh, the collectibles that were in that pack. So this pack was configured to have six random collectibles of a variety of different rarities. See, I got one rare one here. And I can then go ahead and view these in my collection. So uh, here are all uh, these, le these latest six are the ones that I have collected. And if I go ahead and uh, interact with one of these here, I can also see what's in my collection. I can scroll through them. I can see the addition that I had. I can see some of the metadata that was associated with it as well as when it was collected. And then as I alluded to when we were taking a peek in the CMS, we also have this uh, concept of collections. And uh, I will just kind of show you that in here. We have collections and we also have sets. And a collection you can think of as a group, and a set is a subgroup of that set. So let's say uh, if I was to go into collection one here, I might have 16 total NFTs within that collection. 
And then within that collection, I have four different sets. And here you can see I've completed all of set three, but I haven't gotten any from set four, set one, or set two. And you could think of these almost like uh, maybe like baseball teams where you have a 2021 season and then that's the collection. And then every single set within that, um, within that season is a team. And then any, every, uh, every single NFT within that set is a player. Um, so this is just meant to be more of a optional um, incentivization mechanism to allow brands to uh, prompt their uh, customers that are end users to try to collect as much uh, as many of the NFTs within a given collection as possible. And you can even offer a reward, which might be a free tickets to an event, or you could offer an additional collectible to someone who collects all of those collections. So again, just an incentivization. Yep, so here we have, um, this is gonna become much more pertinent in the phase two that we'll talk about in just a moment. But the idea here is that you could you could showcase your NFTs. So right now we're allowing for eight, we can make that more or less if we wanted to, but I could add some. So I have these eight NFTs in my showcase. I can ensure that my showcase is published. And then this would be a public URL to anyone on the platform to see what I have in my collection. And um, Simon, I'll pass that back to you to talk about kind of what's next, because this dovetails into that um, phase two marketplace. So as you saw, there's, there's quite a lot of features, but there are still plenty more. Uh, one of the major ones, as mentioned, is the secondary marketplace. So enabling end users to trade NFTs between each other. And that uh, showcase is uh, one way to like get them out there, but they will also have make it more into an actual marketplace in the platform where you can put up an NFT that you own for sale to other users. Uh, where you can like set the price and how you want to sell it and all that stuff on your own. Uh, another thing, a big thing is self-managed wallets. So for example, using the Algorand wallet, using Wallet Connect or My Algo uh, or the uh, uh, Algo Signer extension, I believe it is. So we do want to support those options as well for users who uh, are more uh, familiar with the using uh, blockchain technology or cryptocurrency in general. Um, so want to provide those an option to sign transactions uh, as well as tracking their NFTs that are in associated with their own wallet. Uh, so hopefully we can achieve that uh, early next year as well. Uh, other things, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we're looking into other payment providers. Uh, and other features that we think uh, will be helpful to make sure uh, we have more options for the various things so we don't have too much vendor locking uh, in various aspects. Uh, and yeah, and then everything else that's going on. So if you go on the GitHub repo, you'll notice there's quite a few issues in there uh, that we're planning out to, to work on in, in the coming months. So feel free to check that out or even ask for requests if there's anything that you feel like is missing. And yeah, I think that's all we got. So any questions? Wonderful. Well, thanks very much, uh, Simon and Jake, for the introduction and the spin around inside of the Algo Mart. Really nice to uh, have you guys joining us and showing us around the, the Algo Mart today. Thank you. Um, yeah, we had uh, we, we had a number of questions. Um, some of them had to do with kind of that authentication piece. I know you touched on that uh, today. The, uh, the the OAuth providers are, are are what's available, and then you can layer on additional security by putting in that uh, six digit numeric alphanumeric passphrase on there. You also mentioned that future that you're you're looking to do integrations with the other Algorand wallets in the ecosystem as well. So um, that's helpful. Um, and then there was, let's see here, you you talked about the the secondary market piece as well. And I was wondering if that then would also include uh, royalties for creators in that secondary marketplace. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely ideas there for how we can solve different ways we can solve that. Uh, and I think there's some idea of having some like marketplace fee for doing transactions uh, while while you're trading on that particular marketplace. So whether that is like a, a fixed fee or a percentage uh, out of whatever you sell, that's uh, probably something we'll try to make it configurable. So whatever uh, one of someone who wants to run this can decide for themselves how how much and how they want to 
uh, do fees if they want to omit fees altogether. That's certainly also an option. Yeah. Good. And then, um, like, who's your target audience? Who who do you expect is going to be running the Algomart? And uh, and then, of course, importantly, where can they uh, reach out, connect with you guys, and find the Algomart software? Right. Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, the uh, uh, link to the repo is in, in that little short link. Uh, I think uh, Russell shared a link in the Slack chat. Um, so you can definitely get there to get to the repo itself. And there's also links to each of our uh, LinkedIn profiles if you want to get in touch with us directly. Uh, beyond that, yeah, so we, we have uh, probably, I don't know how many products we have right now, Jake, but there's probably a few at least. We would have our own clients you know, on that agency where we are launching uh, this for them. Uh, so it's basically just any kind of brand that kind of feel like, hey, I want to have my own storefront to connect with my users. Ideally, to, you know, tie it to something real because that what we've seen so far is that if you're if you just do the NBA Top Shot style, where it's just some some very you know part, weird digital thing that doesn't necessarily tie into real world value beyond if you're a big fan, then it doesn't help as much. We've seen different uh, ideas for how you can tie into real world scenarios to help drive adoption and uh, engagement. Yeah, it's it's been interesting as we as we were kind of. Um ideating and building this out over the over the past few months uh, to see the different kind of client prospects come to the table was, um, at least it was interesting for me, we have things in the entertainment sector, things in sports, things in, in even kind of like social and eco sectors as well. So it's, it's certainly not, um, it's certainly not tailored to one specific, uh, specific industry vertical. Um, it's definitely applicable to many and we're kind of we're, we're also really excited to see who else could find value in it too because we think there's a lot of potential uh good there was um th there was a question about doing like a big a big drop like uh like like ten thousand. like if i if i want to do like a generative art one you know like w how would i use the algomart to do that H how could it uh, track the various traits and be able to display them as well uh let's see here so various traits mean like different like aspects of the art itself yeah so like uh so if i've got my you know my 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 fox fo foxes i'll go foxes right and mm -hmm. I've, I've got different uh eye colors and heads and right. hats and so on uh excellent question uh I, i'd say right now that's not something we have really discovered or like looked into ourselves so that's definitely some additional feature we could look into to try to adapt into the platform we haven't um, explored generative stuff yet, but I, I think Brandon touched on this in the in the chat. Um, I thought it was a good answer. Is that like the the algo mart as a as an as an entire body might not be the most appropriate thing for that situation, but the aspect of the CMS as a standalone or uh, to kind of manage that generative nature or the API itself that would allow um, would allow some of that kind of house or that housekeeping and. and um, you know, blockchain transactions might actually be a lot easier than just coding a custom solution, even if you're not using Algomart in its entirety. It's not something you could do right out of the box today, but I think a lot of the tools would be there to kind of lay that foundation. And is the interface then primarily that that web interface that that, that you were going through, Jake, or are there APIs that we can um, to, can hit programmatically as well? So there are. So there's a couple, there's a couple different layers to this. So there's obviously the Algorand node, which is uh, handling the blockchain interactions. There's the CMS that we took a look at, which is kind of creating those templates. There's the front end that we that we're demoing most of that time, and that's the user interface that is built on Next.js right now. Um, and then there's the API that provides a number of REST endpoints that kind of um, act as the whole operator behind the scenes. So yeah, you could you could absolutely bring your own front end and just completely get rid of that uh, what I was just showing you and use it to, to your own tailored purposes. Um, you could also augment it uh, to do other things or display it in different ways if you want to, or if you just wanted to use the you know the API as more of a headless solution for some other um, for some other treatment, then you can definitely do that. There are there are REST endpoints in there. Uh, we have Swagger documentation that details all the different ways that you can interface with accounts, um, get assets, uh, get packs, and all the all the all the little configurations that we took a look at in the CMS. Good, helpful, very good. 
Uh, I know you offered up where we can get in contact with you guys directly, and you note, and you also noted that you are hiring. So tell us a little bit about what the DEP team are looking for in uh, Algomart developers. All right. Uh, so Algomart itself is uh, built in uh, Node.js. So if you have experience in there, uh, that's certainly a lot helpful, <laughs> very helpful. Um, but uh, depth and uh, agency in general, they're very like, okay, we look at the individual, like what kind of experience do you have and what, what do you want to work with? Uh, so it's uh, very much a like case-by-case basis and then try to make you fit in where, where needed. And if you're specifically interested in working on in the Algorand related projects uh, with us, then we definitely have plenty of options there. So definitely excited to see if there's any interested folks there. Wonderful. Well, I pasted uh, again one more time into the chat the the link to the deck where everybody can go and get the presentation slides that we saw today uh, has links uh, to the repository in there as well as links to the uh, LinkedIn profiles as well as our presenters. Um, I am looking around maybe at Brendan to wonder if there are any other questions that we want to get answered here. If you want to come up to the stage and we'll when an NFT is purchased, does issuer receive money in dollars or algos? Um, great question. The issuer would receive that money in USDC. Um, that's because Circle supports that. When we offer other payment rails in the future, who knows what that'll be? Um, can we upload and sell 3D voxel files into the NFT marketplace? Definitely going to pass that one to Jake because I don't even know what a voxel file is. <laughs> yeah, you know, to be honest, I'm not uh, sure what a voxel file is either. I'll have to do some. I'll have to do some research on that and get back. But what I can say is that what is a um, what the that model is that you were taking a look at is actually a GLTF or a GLB, which is a kind of standard universal format that you could get out of things like Blender or Cinema 4D or other modeling programs. So um, basically, any sort of modeling uh, or any sort of like WebGL stuff that you're seeing in that experience is really anything that 3JS could support. How does Algomart plan to bridge the gap between cross-chain NFTs? From the perspective of a general user, how can they market an NFT created in Algomart and say OpenSea, which is obviously an Ethereum? And we hear this a lot, uh, but I think it's a common misunderstanding of how you can move assets between blockchains. You can move tokens between blockchains if you wrap them, and I know Algomint is going to offer that as when it launches soon, but I don't believe that's true for NFT assets. Um, and even if it was true, I'm not sure that there would be a value in doing it, uh, but I might be wrong about that. Anyone want to correct me if I am wrong there? I don't think there's a way to like move an NFT or wrap it and put it onto an OpenSea kind of, or I should say Ethereum. I mean, you have the ability, you, you can do that, but you may lose some of the functionality of the underlying, right. um, you know, the, the, what, what, what that particular blockchain may have uh, offered right. in its functionality. But yes, you could, if, if we're talking about strict ownership of wh who owns this uh, particular NFT or the, or the rights to whatever the metadata is describing, that, that piece we could, we could certainly move around between, between blockchains. But if there are other, if you will, smart contracts start Type type things that are associated with that NFT, then th those may be lost if they're going elsewhere. Um, does Algomart have a recommended place for hosting NFT assets? Now, I'll I'll leave this to you guys, but I will say at first that you do not have to use a decentralized file storage solution for this. So, um, I don't know who wants to take that one. Yeah, I can take it out. Uh, so, right now with us using GCP, we're using uh, Firebase storage to store the files. Uh, there's certainly no, no requirement to store them anywhere in particular. Uh, the reason we do it right there is because that integrates well with the directed CMS. When you upload a file, that's kind of like where it can end up. Um, but yeah, we're definitely looking into supporting uh, decentralized options like the IPFS, uh, as we're also looking into supporting the ARC3 uh, uh, standard, I guess you can call it. Is that right, Ryan? So we do want to have support for that stuff too, to make sure uh, NFTs are not locked into a particular instance of Algmart, for example, so you can uh, have the NFT live beyond uh, wherever the marketplace, where whatever storefront you got it from originally. Um, so there are definitely things we're looking at there to make sure that the actual asset itself, the, the file that you actually bought, uh, is not tied to anything in particular, but that does require the some decentralized storage option. Got it. Oh, here's 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 the uh, favorite question for a development team. So you talked a little bit about <laughs> you know what what's uh, what's out there on the horizon, but when is it just soon? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, <laughs> no, so crypto we, trademark we, 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, we have quite a few uh, things in the pipeline right now, which uh, means we have to slow down on new, new feature development for a little bit. Uh, but we do want to speed that up again after New Year, uh, once the team get a chance to get a breather. Um, so we do want to uh, start building on these features I mentioned uh, sometime early next year. So hopefully by the end of the first quarter or second quarter at latest, we have some more uh, nice stuff to show off. I like that. The, uh, the the list that you had shown earlier in that roadmap uh, were those uh, prioritized in any in any way, or were those just uh, happen to be the things that are on the backlog? I think those are probably the ones that are top of our minds. But uh, I think as we start launching uh, uh, actual live instances of this, uh, I think that will kind of help drive what we prioritize over other things in our backlog. Mm -hmm. uh, so it may may prove that okay, some of those things will have to be put on a like back burner until we figure out what actually is useful now rather than later. So it's free and open source software. It's available on GitHub. Is that where you want us to communicate with you about uh, f future enhancements and, and 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 contributing and developing there as well? That's right. Yep, yep. It's all open source and happy to take uh, requests or bug reports and all that stuff on there. Uh, the discussion tab. Is enabled there too. So if there's any just question about how does this work, uh, feel free to ask there uh, to help uh, questions for other people who may uh, wondering the same thing. Uh, we're also in the uh, Algorand's official uh, Discord server. So there's an Algmart uh, channel there in case you want to ask us questions there as well. Say so Austin asked a good question, and he said, for a completely out of the box amateur, should I learn Python networking, and then I'll be ready to start putting all the algo Legos together? What is the fast track option for someone who's an infinite infant with all of this, just starting, uh, just start looking on Algorand's website and diving in? Or are there any groups that are learning piece, piece by piece right now? And I'm sure everyone's going to have a different answer to that question. Um, I posted to the, the developer Algorand tutorials, which I know uh, Russell's put a lot of work into, and that's how I personally got started. So if anyone, if anyone is looking to dive in, I would say that's a great jump off. But Ryan, I don't know if you have any other recommendations there too. So question for you. Uh, you, you, you nailed it, Jake. Thanks very much. Uh, yes, the Algorand developer portal is the place to go. That's developers.algorand.org. Um, we are always putting lots and lots of new content up there because we're rapidly developing here at Algorand about what, what it is that you can build with assets and applications and smart contracts and so on. So. Uh, start there. Certainly the Discord server uh, is the other place where once you're in and you've got questions, we're, we're there around the clock answering questions there as well. So love to have you guys join us. As well as want to thank Jake and Simon here today from the Dept Agency showing off their latest release, the Algomart, this open source piece of software that allows uh, users, creators to uh, come in and build an NFT marketplace. It was wonderful to see your piece of software. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Hey, thank you, Ryan. Thank you. This is great. Outstanding. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining Algorand Developer Office Hours. We'll see you here in a couple of more weeks. Uh, don't forget to sign up at algorand.com slash developers. And there you can see what we have coming up and uh, sign up to join us uh, for our future ones as well. So thanks everyone once again for joining. Have a good rest of your day and have fun building on Algorand. <laughs>